<clears throat> There's gonna be no jumping. No. Woo! I feel like crap. But we're still gonna do this. Pretty sure some little germ donkey kid came into the gym and got me sick yesterday. I will find you, patient zero. I will find you. And I, and I won't like you. All right, so we're gonna talk about Australian CrossFit Championships qualifying event number two. So, what is it? All right, so we got a 20 minute time cap. So we got 20 minutes on the clock. First thing we're starting off with, kind of like a buy-in pretty much, is a 30, 20, 10 of double dumbbell deadlifts at 35 kilos or also for you non-kilo users like me, 77 pounds. And then burpee box jump overs, box facing of course. And then with the time left in the 20 minutes, we're trying to find a three rep max overhead squat from the floor. All right, so basic workout. Let's delve in, talk about each portion of it. All right, so double dumbbell deadlifts. Say that nine times fast. Double dumbbell deadlift, double dumbbell deadlift. De Whatever. Sounds like Dumbledore from Harry Potter. The standard for it is we're standing up with the deadlifts and at the, at the bottom, only one head of every dumbbell has to touch the ground. So it really lessens the range of motion when you gotta go down. If for instance, I had to touch both heads of the dumbbell when I went down, like as if we were doing um, like dumbbell snatches, you have to go a lot further distance. So I think, the, I think the best way to really show this is just really to cut from this scene and Cut right to a dumbbell scene. So, cut. Don't hit my camera. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna show a little dumbbell deadlifts. Um, the camera's gonna be out the ground instead of at my hips, obviously stand the dumbbells up. That's really quite simple. But the really comes in a conjunction of how you hold the dumbbell, right? So, let's talk about that. So, instead of hold the dumbbell, like so, okay, we're, and, and we're actually gonna back it off as far as we can back towards our body, that way the front of the head dips down. That way when I touch the ground, right, I can just touch it like this. So I can try to create as much space, that way if I had turned it, I had to go down even further down. But now, I'm just, you know, it, it's a less range of motion, so. It's really quite simple and kind of intuitive, but I figured it was still worth the discussion of it. So, uh, cut back. Obviously, the folks in Australia are getting revenge on many, many years of the open being based, obviously, in the United States, and therefore we do pounds and they're doing kilos. So they're having to like, you know, tape singular change plates to their dumbbells. Um, so this year, of course, now we're suffering at revenge of them, and they're, it's 35 kilos, which is 77 pounds. How I did it was we have two, a set of 75 pound dumbbells, and I essentially duct taped um, two pounds to it. I had a, a pound plate, a three quarter pound plate, and a one quarter pound plate. Just, you know, your, your prototypical rogue change plates. So, really quite easy. Personally, if you're trying to qualify, you've gotta do these unbroken. You can't, I mean, for sure you should be able to do the 30 unbroken, but you, ha you can't drop the 20s. I know that's probably the hardest part, it's a sticking point is, you're doing 20s and you're thinking, man, I'm 12 in, my hamstrings are blowing up, and I've gotta go back and jump over the box a bunch more. You can't drop it if you're trying to qualify. You gotta push through, get the 30, get the 20, get the 10, um, and get to the perfect box jump over. So, there's really not a whole lot to talk about for this movement. It's super simple. Like, it's gonna kinda be one speed. You can't go super, super fast, because then you're cutting your range of motion really low, um, and, you're kind of one speed in this movement. There's really not a whole lot to talk about here. So let's let's go to burpee box jump overs. This workout is pretty much burpee box jump overs. The last qualifying workout that the Australian CrossFit Championship did was all about power cleans, and this one is all about burpee box jump overs, okay? Burpee box jump overs is the game changer, and this is where your money's made. How many do we have total? 
we've got a total of 60. 60 burpee box jump overs, which is a lot. It's a lot of them, right? So when I approach this workout, um, obviously I'm doing my 30 dumbbell devilless, you know, I'm doing it at whatever speed, I can't even remember what it was. Like it took me like 45 seconds to do that, okay? And then I approach my 30 burpee box jump overs. And note to self, my, my piece of advice is you need to pace these burpee box jump overs, but don't pace them, you can't pace them too slow that we get a slow, a slow overall score. And you can't pace them too fast because you don't want to burn out. So it's really easy to do, you know, your 30 dumbbell deadlifts, and then you get to the burpee box jump overs for 30, and you're banging out 30 box jump overs as fast as you can. And if you can hold that for the 30, 20, 10, then definitely do it. I cannot do that. So the first 30, I'm pacing. What's my pace? I will do one burpee box jump over every four seconds. That's my pace. For the 30 and the 20. Do one every, every 30 seconds, one every four seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, okay? That's my pace. It's a fast enough pace where I don't feel like I'm slow, so I feel like I'm, I'm still moving at a pretty good click, but it's slow enough that my heart rate isn't exploding, and that way when I come back for the 20 burpee box jump overs, I'm, you know, I'm doing one every six seconds. It's, it's not detrimental. This is a, a non-detrimental pace for me. So I'm saying, this is my pace, like we always talk about. Your pace might be different. It might be faster. It might be one every three seconds. It might be slower. It might be one every five or one every six, you know. Maybe at the top you need to catch a deep breath before you go on to the next one, okay? So that's my pace for burpee box jump overs. I held this pace for my 30s. I held this pace for my 20s. And then when you get to your 10s, I mean, you're done, right? You've already done your, your 10 dumbbell deadlifts. And now only thing standing between you and taking a rest before you get the overhead squat is 10 burpee box jump overs. And that's the time to surge. And that's the time to go faster. So I think when I, once I got to my 30, oh, I'm sorry. I think once I got to my 10 burpee box jump overs, I think I switched from going one every four seconds to one every three seconds. So you can do it. But of course, I can't hold one every three seconds for more than 10 or 15 reps and then I'm dying. So, um, yeah, so again, like we said, one every four seconds for my 30 and my 20, and then once I got the 10, I'm surging and I'm one, one every three seconds. So, I, there's really not a whole lot that goes into this workout other than the fact of being smart. And I think you'll, you guys will kind of see a trend that I talk about in all these workouts is being smart. And once the three, two, one goes off, boop, boop, boop. You're not just uh, going crazy, right? The goal is conserve at the beginning a little bit, that way you can surge at the end or at least keep a similar pace throughout the workout, right? You'll see a lot of trends in the way I do workouts and that directly applies to this workout. We're pacing on the 30s, we're pacing on the 20s. Once you get to the 10s, you know, you're still doing the same pace on the dumbbell deadlifts, but once you get to the 10 burpee box jump overs, we're letting it go, we're going all out. All right, so we got done with the 30, 20, and 10. Okay, we've surged at the end, right? So our 10 burpee box jump overs, we've gone as fast as we possibly can. So now you're done and you're laying on the floor and you're breathing really heavy. And that's fine because most of the time when we do a workout that has, hey, with time remaining, we're finding a one rep max snatch. With time remaining, we're finding a two rep max hang clean or you know, such and such. Usually there's like five to six minutes, seven minutes at max to find that lift, right? Well, this workout is totally different. You've got a 20 minute time cap and that is huge. So if you do the first portion, let's say you do your 30, 20 and 10 in 10 minutes, you still have 10 minutes to find a three rep max overhead squat. That's a lot of time. Like that's a lot of time to do, to get a lot of stuff done. That is a lot of time to do a lot of lifts. So my recommendation for this workout is that you obviously warm up your overhead squat before you do the 30, 20, 10, right? Don't do the 30, 20, 10, get done and expect that in 10 to 12 minutes, you have time to warm up and hit a three rep max overhead squat. Warm it up before. The first thing I did when I came in is I warmed up my overhead squat. I hit up to 80%, okay? I hit 80% on what I wanted to hit that day. Not on my overall one rep max overhead squat because that's from the rack, not from the floor. But I said, okay, I'm gonna hit 80% of what I wanna hit today. I felt comfortable with it. 
then I took off my Olympic lifting shoes, took off uh, you know, the apparatuses I'm wearing for that, that movement, and then I put on my tennis shoes and warmed up the 30-20-10 portion, and then started the workout, and then once I got to my 30-20-10, I rolled right into my three max overhead squat, okay? Again, like I mentioned, you have a lot of time on the clock, so feel free to take your time chalking up, resting a little bit, putting on your shoes, putting on your knee sleeves, getting your belt ready, whatever you need to put on. I had a lot of time to do it, and I took advantage of it. And to be honest, I didn't even use the full 20 minute time cap, because honestly, it was just way too much time. When I hit my last set of three, I thought to myself, that was really rough, I'm not gonna go up, I'm done. And I think I still had two minutes on the clock left, so I really only used 18 of the 20, the 20 minutes to, to even hit my lift. Don't fall into the trap where you're like, okay, I wanna conserve energy and I'm only gonna hit one overhead squat here. I'm only gonna hit two. In the beginning, if it's really, really light, like 30, 40, 50%, then yes. But by the time you get to 65% or so, or, or 75%, make sure you're hitting it for all three. That way, you have something on the board and you feel confident. You don't wanna get to the end and be like, okay, I'm gonna only do my three rep max overhead squat on the weight I wanna hit. Because if you fail that, what the heck are you gonna do? Now you have a probably a zero or a really terrible score. So make sure you get something on the board that you feel safe with, something that's a little bit harder, and then obviously stretch out and try to hit that good number that you're shooting for. Really guys, it's that. that's really it, it's really, it's a really simple, simple workout. I really wish that when I did it, I wasn't feeling like total trash, um, but it was still a good workout to do. Uh, kudos to you Australian CrossFit Championship for a simple, simple workout. That's still pretty cool. But yeah, those are my tips for that workout. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below. The workout that will be up next will be the full length event number one qualifier, which should be up the next couple days. And then I'll definitely have event number two qualifier out for you guys to watch before you hopefully reattempt it on the 20th and the 21st of this month. Um, and then I believe on the 21st, they release week two qualifying workouts. And so again, we'll be back here in the barn talking about tips, talking about the workouts, and then of, co of course, putting full length workouts up. So anyways, appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you guys later. Thanks.